day, welcome to Pay It Forward. This month I am bringing you a beautiful little baby carriage. Now this baby carriage you would have probably seen is from this month's masterclass where I make mama hair. This project was just too good for me not to share it with all of you as well because it's very much a standalone project. You can make this on its own, pop a couple of babies in it. You've got a whole lot of little felt babies right here in Pay It Forward from all those mama and baby series I've done for you. You'll see as we go along that I tuck them all in there and show you how that looks. But this is really quite straightforward. It's a lot like putting together my little camper van if you've done that. This is very similar. In fact, I would say it's much easier. So it's something that you don't see everywhere and it would make an incredible gift. It would also look fantastic in a baby's nursery or you could on sell these, which you're most welcome to do. You can sell any uh, product that you make from my patterns. You just can't sell the pattern itself. Um, and I think it's just absolutely delightful. I'm looking forward to all of the colors that you're going to um, add to this project. And it's very open to embellishment. So your free pattern is in the drop down description box below. You'll be able to print out your pattern templates. I've given you a big blurb there that gives you information about how to go about doing that. Please read that. There's also a measuring bar on every pattern page. Um, that will help you get your sizing right, so do pay attention to that as well. But let's right now go and have a look at what we're going to need to put this one together. So let me run through all of the materials and requirements and the pattern pieces you'll need to make this very sweet little old-fashioned baby pram, baby carriage. I'm making mine completely in felt. You do need to use felt for this project. There are a couple of pieces that we make with felt fabric. I will walk you through that. We are going to start with the side panels for the pram. So what we've got there is you've got to cut out of just felt, felt on its own in this case. Um, pure wool felt will work better because it's slightly more dense and you need to have a lining colour and an outer colour. So my outer colour for this project is a sage, a nice soft sage green and the liner colour is that antique white. Of course I'm making this for my mama hair in my masterclass project but I thought I would share it with all of you because it's a great little project to make up and we've got all sorts of little tiny characters that we can tuck into this pram that I already have there right there on pay it forward and you can also use it as a something to store all sorts of little goodies in it's just very sweet and you can really embellish it so those are my two side panels cut out and ready we need a support that goes in the side. If you've made my little caravan, my little caravan camper, this is put together in much the same way. So these two side pieces are cut from mat board. You can see I've got one and they sit just in between. They will sit in between the two layers and give it the structure that it needs. It does need to be mat board. I am only using one piece of mat board um, and I cut mine out with scissors and this little hole that we've got here use a hole punch or a drill to drill through that because mat board's very strong but it does need to be in exactly the right spot I've given you that spot on your pattern template because we have a handle that is going to travel through okay so while we're here, let's talk about that handle. It is just a wooden craft stick. I'm going to be painting this one to suit my project. And it is about a five millimeter diameter craft stick. And it works well with the size of a hole punch. Okay, so that's our side pieces. On mine, I'm going to be adding some little heart details and some simple lazy daisy stitch embroideries. You can embellish the sides of this pram any way you like. Um, and you can certainly add all sorts of, you know, different appliques and so on. I'm gonna be showing you what I do with that little heart detail. I want to keep it all quite classic. So those are the sides of the pram. Now for the base of the pram, 
Again, we need two pieces of felt. And on the inside liner piece, which is in the off-white, remember I've still got the sage green for the outer, the liner is the off-white. That one is cut with fusible webbing applied to it because we're going to be fusing all of these layers together. So sandwiched in the middle of these two pieces is a piece of fusible foam. So fusible foam is best. You could use uh, quilt wadding, but I would do two layers. Fusible foam is absolutely the best because it's got the hold and it's gonna hold the bottom of your pram um, and hold that shape really well. So ideally you would have fusible foam. It is fusible only on one side and that will be sandwiched together like that. The whole project is put together with a blanket stitch and it's really quite simple. So let's now talk about the visor that goes over the top and creates that lovely bonnet over the top of the pram. So this is where I've cut mine. My two pieces I've cut in felt fabric. So I call it felt fabric. I've made this by fusing a fabric print to my felt using fusible webbing. And then I cut my pieces out. So it's still a non-fray um, sort of pattern piece that won't fray away, but it's got that extra strength. But you get the benefit of having a print um, as well as the stability of the felt. The print in my case is on the outside. You can have it, sorry, it's on the inside. You can have it on the outside that's fine. And again, we will be adding um, all sorts of detailing to this. So I'm using to trim the edges of this little visor, I'm going to be adding a bit of lace. This is a stretch lace, very soft and easy to work with, um, just to give a little trim either side. And of course, you could add any kind of detailing or you can just blanket stitch that edge if you like. Now let's talk about the wheels. So for my masterclass, we're using joints for the wheels, which are absolutely ideal. I've already made up three of them so that I can show you. So they're made up with a joint combo, which is a 50 millimeter wooden disc, a 35 millimeter wooden disc. The bolt is, is glued to the 35 millimeter disc. Then on the other side, we've got a 16 millimeter disc, a washer and a nut. So I'll give you the length of the bolt too. You need a slightly longer bolt, the type, that, the length that we use usually for neck joints because they've got to go through quite a few layers into the side. Now this is the best way to add the wheels to this project. If you don't want to be using uh, the joints or perhaps you don't have those, you can't find them, you can't find the wooden discs, I'm going to give you another option. So you can basically get beautiful wheels similar to this by using the same 50 millimeter wooden disc. So you'll need four of those, one for each wheel. And then you need two buttons, two buttons of the same size, preferably two whole buttons that will look good on the outside of your wheel. Um, and also we're going to be able to sew straight through the hole in the middle of the disc um, and pull it through and tie it on. Now, this is really simple to do. And if you don't have the wooden discs, just use the template that I've given you and you can cut a couple of pieces of matte board glue them together with PVA glue and make your own discs, but you still need a hole in the middle. So you'll still need to drill that hole through the center, but I've given you that template. So if you just want to button joint them on, it's two buttons for each wheel and one disc, whether you make them or whether you purchase them, 50 millimeter. So, and I'll show you how we do that when we get to there. 
For the actual discs themselves, we are covering them with felt. So you will need your four pieces of felt and it's just plain felt to cover the larger discs. And then you have your four pieces of felt to cover the 35 millimeter discs. And I will be adding on each of my wheels, I will be adding a little flower in the center. So I've got four of those ready and that all works with the rest of my project. You don't have to add anything at all, but it does look really sweet to center that wheel that way. And it gives it that fantastic 3D look. So that's our wheels. In the, the pram itself, we're going to be making a little mattress and I'm using just a kitchen scourer. So we're gonna cut that to size. It just needs a little bit taken off. These are pretty much universal the world over. You need some extra fabric to cover that. We will be making a, a little pillow, so you'll need a little bit of extra felt for that. And then you can really make your bedding out of anything you like. I will probably use some soft t-shirting material to tuck around my babies. Mine are Mama Hare's babies. Um, something soft works really well. And of course, you'll coordinate it to work with your project and your colors. You will need your extra strong thread. The whole thing is sewn up with a blanket stitch. So you need an eight ply pearl thread in colors to suit. You also need some clear craft glue and your usual supplies. So we are going to start first off with covering and getting our wheels all set up. So we're going to start by covering our discs for our wheels. As I said, I've already done the first three. Now, if you are using the button method, you still need to cover your 50 millimeter discs. So we do that by taking a single strand of extra strong thread and we are going to start on the very outside edge, only about two millimeters in from the edge. And we're going to travel all the way around that edge, nice and close, tiny stitches with a running stitch. You could cover these discs with fabric, but I really encourage you to use felt because it all adds to the volume, the roundness of those wheels. Overall just gives you a better effect. But if you do want a little pop of color or detail, you can use that um, fabric, but of course it tends to show it doesn't stretch as well and uh, you might get some little gathers around the wheels, which is for me is a no-no. So I'm just going to make my way right the way around. I've left my tail end hanging and I'm going to finish again right next to that on this side as well. So I've sewn that all the way around and I've tied my tail ends into the first knot. Now flip that over. So your threads are coming out on the underneath. We're gonna drop that disc right in the center, or perhaps you've made a couple of mat board discs still with a hole in the middle. Make sure it's nicely centered, pull on those thread ends. And you're gonna pull that in as tight as you possibly can and knot that off about four times before snipping those thread ends. Then, you just repeat the process if you're using the joints and do the same thing. Drop that one in, pull in your thread ends and tie it up around that, uh, the little disc that already has that bolt glued in. And remember that bolt has to be glued onto that disc. I now have both of those discs nicely covered. Now, regardless of whether you're using the button method or the joint method, you need to make a hole through your large disc with your awl. And if you are using the button method, that's it, you're done. You only need to do just four of those like that. If you're using the jointing method, of course, we're now going to put that wheel together and I'm going to take some clear craft glue and just glue up around that base right where that will hit on the 
on the other piece and I'm going to take that through straight through there press that down I'm going to add the other pieces to my joint and that can all compress nicely we can put that aside while that glue is drying and we're getting started on the rest of our project I do want to do that quite tight and you can do that up nice and tight because you've glued the bolt so that's all going to compress nicely I will add the little flower detail at the end so those are my four wheels all ready to go so now we are going to get started on doing the detailing the embroidery detailing on the sides of the pram so the first thing we need to do when working on the side panels of our pram is we're going to glue the card stock that we have our mat board to the inside pieces of the pram so the inside liner pieces i've already done this one I've already glued it into place and I'm gluing it onto the side that doesn't have my marks because I need to be able to see those marks but they will be on the inside of the pram. So what I'm going to do is just very liberally coat this piece here and you want there to be enough glue on it to stick but you don't want there to be so much glue that it seeps through your felt so a bit of a balancing act um, and I find that with clear craft glue is I usually just coat it all then I just give it about a minute or so to sit there because it starts to dry really quickly and then it's not quite so liquidy and you can press it on there we go so that's all glued up just given it a minute and now I'm going to drop it into place so there needs to be enough space all the way around because we've got to do our sewing and there needs to be a seam allowance right the way around you can see that that will fit beautifully and if it doesn't if there's not enough room around here then you need to check that you've cut that cardboard piece out properly just press that into place I'm going to check that I haven't got any glue seeping through which I don't and you really need to make sure particularly on these lower edges that all those edges are nicely adhered so now we can just put those aside to dry completely and start work on our side pieces now I've already completed the applique work on one side panel that you can see there so you may not be following what I'm doing here but I've actually just done the little heart and I've done some lazy daisy stitches just randomly and added a little bit of foliage a little bead in the center of this one but you could you could do something totally different there's all sorts of things like little flowers and things that you can add um, but I will walk you through how I go about doing this design so I actually have a line marked here and it's on your pattern template that will show you exactly where that heart needs to sit because you have to remember that there are two wheels that are going in here so you don't want any of your design to interfere with that because it won't be seen so you can see exactly how I've positioned them all so that's why this heart position is really important so there's a line running through you just line up the center divot of the heart and the point and you'll get it exactly in the right spot and also you need to have it sitting almost a centimeter from the top edge so that neither will it interfere with the stitching at the top here once you've got all that lined up correctly remove your backing paper and press that in place with a hot iron and a protective cloth so with that little heart shape in place now we have to stitch around the outside edge you can do that by hand like I'm going to this project for me is all about the hand stitching 
Um, it's about the care and attention and it really shows in your work when you've done some gorgeous hand stitching like that. But you certainly can just stitch this one on the machine. You could do a straight stitch all the way around. You could do a zigzag satin stitch. I'm going to do a blanket applique stitch. So I have, in this case, I'm using my eight ply pearl thread and I have a single strand with a knot in the end. I'm gonna come in from behind and bring my needle out through the bottom layer right on the edge of that shape. Blanket applique stitch, I have um, a video that shows you exactly how to sew this stitch on my YouTube channel here and you can certainly check that out but I will show you a few stitches here. So I'm keeping that thread out the way. I'm gonna come in right below this. I want these stitches to be nice and small so it's probably just about two millimetres in. Bringing my needle through all the layers and out again on that edge, right on that edge and I'm bringing my needle out through the thread loop. So then we move along the length of one stitch, we're gonna do the same thing through all the layers and bringing our needle out right on the edge. Needle coming through that thread loop again. You can use any color for this. Obviously you'll choose colors that really work for your project. And it's just a matter of moving along and outlining that heart. Do make sure that whenever you're doing a blanket applique stitch like this, that you're rotating your work as you go. Your stitches should radiate out from your shape like this. If you just hold this and continue to stitch, all your stitches will be on a diagonal. So rotate your work as you move around that heart. So that's all I'm gonna do travel all the way around till I get back to my start. So with that heart shape nicely stitched in place, I'm now going to show you how to do a simple lazy daisy stitch, which is the stitch that creates these flowers. Um, and certainly you might be doing something different, but I will walk you through this. Now, lots of people do this differently. I'm gonna show you how I do it and what I think is the easiest way. So first of all, I would never do a lazy daisy stitch without drawing a circle. So the circle size is how big you want your flower to be and you need to have a little dot right in the middle. Um, so I do use, you can use anything that's small and round. I do have a little um, stencil of circles that helps me with a lot of things. So for the larger flower, I'm going to use eight ply pearl thread, just a single strand. For the smaller flowers, I just use my extra strong thread because I find I get a more detailed finish. So I'm just using a lavender. So basically on the opposite side, I'm going to imitate on the other side of the pram what I've done with this one. I might change the flower color up a little bit, but my first one is at the front of the heart. So I've got a knot in the end of a single strand and I'm gonna bring my needle straight through that first center hole. Now I might want to add, because we're working with, in my case, pure wool felt, because we're working with felt with nothing ironed onto the back of it, so no interfacing and no fusible webbing, you need to be gentle with your handling of this because you don't want to be stretching it or distorting the shape. So just gently does it. It's quite firm through here because we've got that heart on there. So we've pulled that through the knot is holding from behind there. Now I can dive back into that same hole and bring my needle out anywhere on that edge of that circle line. And this is heat erasable marker that will come off when I iron it. And I bring my needle out through the loop. And I pull on that and you can see that's my first little petal. I hold my thumbnail on that and I just secure the stitch by going straight through to the back. And that's held my first little petal in place. I now come back up through that same centre hole, which is what we do each time. 
then we move that thread out the way, go back into that same hole and make our next petal. So if you want a full thick bloom, go ahead and keep those stitches quite close to each other to create lots of petals. If you want more of a sparse look, uh, certainly just um, spread them out a little more. Those stitches, again, I've come through that loop and there's my second stitch. Make sure you're not pulling up on it too tight because we don't want to distort this pattern piece. Again, make that anchoring stitch and that will hold. So that's my second stitch. I like this flower to be nice and full. I'll show you a third one coming up from the center again, that same spot. Pulling that thread out of the way, going back into the center and coming out again on the edge of that circle. Pull that through, that loop again, and then anchor that stitch. So there we go, three beautiful little petals and we're gonna continue on all the way around. So then I just do the same with this one, only this time I'm going to be using just an extra strong thread to do the same thing, follow the same procedure. I have my flowers nicely stitched in place and I've gone ahead and taken my heat erasable marker and just drawn in a couple of little flower stalks and a couple of little leaf sprigs there. And I'm just going to stitch over those lines and I'm using my extra strong thread in a green single strand. Let me just show you the easiest way to do that is it's basically just a back stitch. So we're gonna start up here. Nice small stitches. Come up from the underneath, traveling along on that line that I've made and each time going back into the last exit hole so that your stitches are all linked. And so it makes for a beautiful connected line with no spaces in between. And you just basically cover everything that you've drawn there. I'm just going to do those little leaves just as simple as that. I find that I use extra strong thread in the Guterman for a lot of my embroidery because the thread doesn't fatigue like some of the embroidery floss does but you certainly can use embroidery floss Stranded cotton, as some people call it. Um, if you are, I would use just two strands for this sort of fine work. But you can see I'm just traveling along those lines. Once I've stitched over those, I will take this back to my iron and give it a quick press to remove all of those marker um, markings that I've put on there. So again, I have taken this back to my iron and removed those marks, those heat erasable marks. And now I've drawn in the rest of my design. So I've taken my little stencil and I've basically imitated what I've done here. I've drawn in my circles ready for my lazy daisy stitches and also the little foliage pieces as well to stitch over. So I'm just going to do exactly what I just did here. Just remember though, because on this section, we're working just on the felt. So very, very gently with your handling, don't pull your stitches up too tight because we don't want to bunch up that felt. We want a nice flat finish. Certainly go ahead and add any beads that you wish at this stage as well, but add the beads last after you've removed all of those marks. Now that I have all of my stitching done on both of my pieces, it's time for me to glue the side panel liner and the side panel, this one, into place with the, the firm board in the middle. So always glue this side, glue the 
the cardboard and also all the way around the edge. Remember what I said about leaving it for a few minutes, not for a few minutes, for a few seconds. Let that glue start to dry a little because we don't want it seeping through the front. And then you can line this up perfectly and it really does have to be lined up exactly. So just lay that one on top, take your time to get it into the right position and then you will press it all down and also I've already done this one. Always glue it from this side and make sure that you press all those edges together. Don't worry if you've got a couple of little areas that aren't quite right, we can always trim those off. Um, but make sure that it's all pressed in this area where those um, little wheels are going to go and make sure those edges, and you should get a nice little beveled sort of a look. So I'm gonna do that with this one and then we're gonna leave these to dry absolutely completely before we move forward. So the glue on those two side panels are nice and dry now, it is nice and dry. So we can go ahead and we're gonna start our stitching. So you can see I've already done one here and I have started, this is the handle of the pram here and I've started at the mark you've got on your pattern template there and I've sewn a blanket stitch all the way around that top of that handle till the end here. It's much easier to do this stitching now than when the pram is all put together. And we like that, we like to make things easier. So I'm going to start on this one. I'm gonna start at this end and I'm just going to take my needle in between the layers. I'm just gonna start right on the edge here. I've got a knot in the end and I'm using my eight ply pearl thread. I'm using a contrasting color just to bring everything together with my project. Certainly you can match it if you like, but it does frame the pram up nicely if you do use a bit of a, an outlining color. So now I'm simply going to sew a blanket stitch. So blanket stitch is taking your needle through all of your layers and bringing the needle out through your thread loop. Going to keep those stitches nice and small. It's fairly easy to do a blanket stitch on these pieces because your, your mat board is not going to let you go any deeper than you should go. So just keeping those stitches nice and small and even. and it gives it a lovely beveled finish like it's turned in. And you would always sew this stitch from the side that will be viewed, which of course is the outside. So there we go. I'm just gonna continue on, as I said, all the way around to the mark that's on the back of that pattern. So that completes our work on our side panels for now. Do go ahead with your awl and make the holes. If you're using joints for the wheels, make your holes through each of those points that you've got marked on your pattern pieces. We can put these aside now and we will start work on our center base gusset. I still call it a gusset, even though it's not an animal. Um, so we've got our outer felt which has nothing applied to it we've got our inside foam piece which is fusible on one side and you can see that there is room just enough room for a seam all the way around we're then going to take our liner piece which does have the heat and bond on it and we're going to make a sandwich of that and we're going to press it all together i do press the fusible foam on first and that's nice and secure and then I press on my felt liner with my fusible webbing and make sure that you capture all of those edges. Here is my completed center um, piece, a center gusset I call it, the bottom of the pram. They're all, those edges are all fused together and I've gone ahead and just sewn the two ends with a blanket stitch, the same as we did on our side panels. And now we are ready to start putting this one together. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole project, um, but it is only felt. And if you follow the way that I show you to do it, you're gonna find it 
not too bad. So if you have problems with these edges not sealing together, you could always glue these pieces together. Just don't overdo the glue because this bottom section needs to be quite flexible, which is why I use that lovely foam. Okay, so the way that we put this together, we are going to sew this whole thing together with a blanket stitch. We're going to start, we are working on the side panel. So you've got the side panel facing you and we've got our, of course, our liner pieces uh, turned to the inside. This doesn't get turned through. And we need our thread, which is a single strand of eight ply pearl thread I'm using. You can use a five ply if you want something thicker, but I just find the eight ply is easier to manage. And we are going to be coming in, first of all, let's just come in between the two layers. We'll come in on the, the side panel. The knot will just sit in there. That won't be seen because our hood goes over here. The important part about this is that we start at the end. We start at this end, not at this end because we need this end to match up. If this end comes up, not quite exactly, you know, matching up here with your mark or your stitching, that's okay. It won't make any difference to the finished project, but we do need this end to match up. So I'm going to start with my blanket stitch through all of those layers. So it's a lot of layers to get through. And I initially do two stitches right on top of each other. And I'm not pinning this, you'll notice. If you followed my seam allowances and instructions, this base piece will fit in beautifully. But what you do need to do is make sure that as you're sewing this base piece in, we're gonna fold it, bring it around. Make sure that you're really pulling it nice and taut, otherwise you'll just come up too short. So taking my needle through all of those layers and bringing it out through the loop. Lots and lots of blanket stitching in this project. Nice and tight because that's what's holding this pram all together. And make sure you're going through, straight through the layers, don't be going through on an angle. we go. It's a little hard on the hands. But that's more about the holding than the sewing. Pulling that very tight each time. So keeping up the tension on this piece as you pull it around and you just continue on folding it around those curves all the way around until you get up to the other side. So as I said, it will fit beautifully, um, but if you let this get slack, um, you might have some problems it not coming up high enough here. So let me continue on. I'm gonna show you when I've got one side stitched in. So I hope you can see that there. I have one side stitched into place. So we're starting to see the shape of that beautiful pram there. And it's now just a case of repeating that with the other side. We're gonna do the same thing, a little bit trickier because one side's already on and that's going to complete our finished little pram. Now this time, because I still want to be sewing on this side, not the gusset side, so that my stitches look the best on the outside, I know that this fits in perfectly so I can start from this end. But always start your first side right there at the end. So now I can go ahead, I'm just going to throw a pin in that one there. And as I'm sewing this one in, I'm gonna be making sure that I am pulling this nice and taut so that it all does match up when we get right round to the end. Okay, so now we have a beautiful, strong little baby pram there. Very, very solid. 
we are going to be adding that little mattress inside but our next step is to add the wheels which is super exciting when it all starts to come together so if you are going to be using your button wheels let me just show you how you're going to go about doing that so we're going to need some extra strong thread so I've got a double strand of extra strong thread. I'm just using my medium doll needle and you are going to take your button. You're going to go in at one side of that button straight through, leave the tail ends hanging. You're then going to pass through the disc. You, you will have your covered disc. Just pass through that hole. You're going to go through the hole Get your second button and you're going to go through the back of it. Then back through the front of it. You're then go, going to go back into the hole for the wheel. making this look way more awkward than it actually is. I'm going to go back through the hole in the wheel. And through the other hole, the back of the button. And if I pull on all of that, I've got my wheel held in place by the button inside and now I can tie off super super tight and knot that off about four times and that has our wheel in place. Snip your thread ends. You can, you could even knot it off and then take your thread ends back through the holes back in and snip them off in here. I don't mind the little tied pieces showing on the outside of the wheel and you could also add a little decoration over that button if you want to. So that's your tied on method. And I hope that makes sense. So it's really just starting at the front, always start at the front because you can't get the leverage to tie it off on the inside. So start at the front, through the button, through the disc, through the hole, through the other button, back through the button, through the, the side, through the disc, back through the button again. It really is that simple. You can see what I mean. And we've got the perfect little wheels. Just do that with all four. Now, if you're going to be adding those as joints, let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take my first little wheel. I've made the holes there ready. I can take that through. I'm going to add the corresponding disc washer and nut and I'm going to tighten that up nice and super tight and as we do with all of our joints we're just going to add a drop of super glue once that's all tightened up a drop of super glue in on that nut so that it will never come adrift and we've got our first little wheel just to add the other three there we have all wheels in place and we've got our beautiful little stable pram so what we need to do now is make a little mattress. So I'm using my sponge, my kitchen scourer sponge. Generally, they are all around about seven centimetres wide. I cut mine to 10.5, but just cut yours to fit. So whatever you've ended up with there, remembering you need to leave enough room to cover the sponge. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've tucked that in there. It fits beautifully. And I'm now going to take this sponge and just cover it with my uh, folding it under and with hot glue, I'm going to tuck it all under on the underneath. So that will settle in there beautifully. Super easy to do. I will also add with my hot glue those little flowers in the center of each of those wheels. And then we're going to come back and we are going to create that little hood visor that sits on the top. So to make our little visor hood, 
you're going to take your hood pieces. I've put my right sides together here. In my case, right sides are the felt side, but you can show the print side if you'd rather. I want the print on the inside. I've put those two together and I have matched up that curve perfectly and I've sewn a four millimeter seam allowance. I've then gone ahead, turned that through and pressed that seam out nice and flat. You can see there and it gives you that beautiful curve. Go ahead and roll that seam out as well. And so we've got that beautiful hood bonnet. I want to add some detailing to this before I add it to the pram. So the first thing I'm going to do is that same blanket stitch that we've been sewing all the way around on our pram. I'm now going to do that around the whole lower edge, the unfinished edge of the hood. And I will still be using that warm gold color just to bring everything in together. So I now have blanket stitched the whole raw edge of that little visor hood. And the next thing I'm going to do, and this is optional, I'm going to add a little bit of lace around the edge of the top section of the hood. I'm just using just a simple elasticated lace. You can use any kind of trim you like or none at all, because certainly just the blanket stitched edge is a lovely finish. But I like to add that and I will follow my, my line of stitching. That will be a good guide for where to sew it, but I'm only going to do it on the top edge. Let me get that stitched into place so that you can see how that looks. So that has that little lace trim on that hood and I think it's just a lovely little finish. I have now gone ahead and pinned that one into place. Now what you want is that it's nice and snug across the back here. Pull that nice and firm across the back and make sure that it's lined up either side. You can drop a pin in either size. Do make sure, look at it from every angle, that it's lined up. And then I simply just take a button there either side and stitch that through and that will hold that on beautifully. You'll have a little bit of movement in the in the hood where you can lift it up a little, um, but those two buttons either side will just secure it perfectly. And we're just going to take a little craft stick and you can pass it through. Make sure that you pull the handles out to be exactly the same width as the base of the pram there. And what I will do is I'll measure that and then I will actually cut it off exactly. Now I'll pull mine right in, I'll make a mark there and then I will pull it, pull it out, cut it off and I will glue two buttons either side just to hold that handle in place. I'm using epoxy glue so I'll be using my Araldite that, that I use on my bolts. Um, and it's just going to hold that beautifully and it will stop these handles from pulling off um, the end. The other alternative is just to not put anything on the ends and you can just clear craft glue them in. But if you really want it to hold and adding a button, it will be a smaller button than this, um, on each side is going to really give you an opportunity for more detailing. So let me show you the edge. I'll pull that right through exactly and then glue a button on the side there and then little hands can sit there in the case of mama hair which we're making in masterclass she is designed to perfectly fit this pram so i will get that one done and then we're going to make just i'm going to show you a simple little pillow to put in the front section there and of course you can make any kind of cover blanket you like just a simple piece of fabric with a hem and tuck it around the babies so let me get the handle finished and come back and we'll make that little cushion that little handle is now in place and it's very solid those buttons on both sides lovely little bit of detailing there now I want to make just a little cushion to go under baby's heads uh, under the hood section of the pram. I'm making mine in felt. You might have another idea for this, but this is just a simple way of doing it. I've put together my two pieces of felt and I've drawn 
a rectangle that is going to be my stitching line. Now I give you this template in your pattern template so it will give you the size there and you need to have enough room around it that we're going to cut it and leave a five millimeter seam allowance all the way around. It's just this is the easiest way to do it. We're not going to turn it through. So I'll now take this to the machine. I'll stitch all the way around but I'll just leave a little opening somewhere, it doesn't matter which side, where we can add a little bit of stuffing. You can see that stitching all the way around the edge. I've taken it to my iron and removed that heat erasable mark and I've cut around it just leaving about a five millimeter seam allowance. Now I'm going to take my pearl thread and I'm going to sew. I'm going to leave the open opening as it is and I'm going to sew a blanket stitch all the way around the outside till I get to here to that opening then I'm going to add a little bit of filling and then continue on with my blanket stitching to close it up. And there we go, you can see that little cushion all filled, blanket stitched and that blanket stitch continued on and closes that opening. Of course you could do any sorts of embroidery or embellishment on that little cushion but it does fit beautifully straight across the pram there and it's easier than making two, I think it all just fits, to be, fits together better just with the one. Perfect little headrest to add your babies. Now I've made a simple blanket, just taking two pieces of a t-shirt knit material and stitch it together, turned it through and closed the opening. I've gone for the knit material just because it tucks in beautifully around the babies. Now remember that this one was designed for my mama hair for masterclass. So the colours suit that and also having the knit fabric really does tuck around the babies well. My piece that I made this with, the measurement was 12 centimetres by 10 centimetres, if that helps you. Of course, you could make any tiny little quilt up. Now, you may not be adding babies to this one. Um, you may be filling it up with um, perhaps clips, sewing notions, you might be using it as a, you know, a storage container. But if you are adding babies, we do have a few options here in Pay It Forward in that you could add any of your little animal babies. They would look very cute. Let me tuck them in, in their blanket inside. And these little guys look so cute because they've got their little hands out over the covers there. So we've got a kitty there, we've got a puppy and a bear. We also have a raccoon baby. We've got a little pig as well. Go through my videos and you'll see the mama and baby series and all those babies are available to you if you want to keep it an animal theme. Of course, you may have other plans for this little pram that I haven't even thought of, but I think it's just such a beautiful little project come together. Any child would love it as a gift and it really is quite sturdy. So I hope you've enjoyed making this one and I hope you've enjoyed the little glimpse into Masterclass. Okay everybody, so I'm looking forward to seeing some beautiful baby carriages and all of you clever ladies who do fine needlepoint embroidery and so on. I want to see some really embellished ones um, and, and so many different colours, little quilts. You could really go crazy with this one. Do enjoy the process. It is a fun little project to make and I think you really will have a good time. So if you are looking to join Masterclass and you want to be able to make the little hair babies, perhaps, or mama hair, we've got so much on there in Masterclass, so much for you to see. I'll put the link uh, down below for you to come and join Masterclass. Also the link to my Etsy store if you're looking for extra patterns and also the link to our Facebook page where we see so much of your beautiful work. Thank you all for sharing your work with us all. It certainly inspires all of us, gives us different ideas, gives everybody different ideas of what they can do with my patterns. So you're welcome to share any project you've made with any of my patterns, whether it be Masterclass or Pay It Forward right here. So excited to see what you do with this one, everybody. Have a fantastic creative week. Remember to pay all of those good things forward. Till next time, it is Huru from me.